least one question that they have written down. Great. So <clears throat> the way we're going to do this is some representative from each group should come to the front of the class so that you can be filmed. We need to do it that way because for the people online who are taking the course, okay? So you come to the front and you read your question and then we hope for volunteers of some other group and then if you guys cop out and don't volunteer, then I will choose who is going to respond to the question, okay? And it will be the whole group. And if you need a couple of minutes to discuss in the group, that's okay. If you need to ask the asker of the question some questions to clarify the question, that's okay. Okay? So we should get started. I am going to elect you guys in front here to speak first. Okay, uh, I think we are going to ask a uh, more theoretic theoretical question, okay? Um, is it possible to apply a Wikipedia concept to FrameNet, allowing students, non-linguists, language hobbyists, uh, I, I mean, people interested in, li in language and linguistics, uh, I, uh, to take part into the project? Are there any uh, technical constraints to this approach? Do you understand? Do we have a volunteer? Is there somebody who just really understands this question and wants to respond to it? A group that would just love to answer the idea of crowdsourcing, that's the English word, crowdsourcing FrameNet. Okay, that sounds like a no. Um, so can you pass the microphone to this group. Uh, you, can ask, you can ask in Portuguese. That's quite a gente, okay. então, vai em português mesmo. O, o nosso grupo... What more group thought about that that was interesting? Something will live at this moment, like crowdsourcing, as he mentioned, mainly in the internet, that there are various projects that are similar to Wikipedia. So there is Wik everybody. So it would, that, would it be possible to build something similar to the idea of Wikipedia, dealing with frame nets, uh, taking part, everybody, so in where everybody could take part in, in this project, everybody interested in the project, not necessarily uh, linguist, linguists or, or people who like languages and stuff like that, people who uh, like to study all languages, uh, etc. So things like that. Would, would, would that be possible to coordinate a, a wiki project being adapted to FrameNet? Uh, just to be clear, Só ser claro. so, that so that we have a chance for everyone to uh, present their question, you have five minutes, okay? You can spend that time asking him questions, or you can spend the time debating among yourselves, but you should think about it. Okay? So, just so that we have this process rolling, I want to get at least one other group thinking about their question. So I'm going to ask for volunteers for another group to present a question, not you guys, obviously, um, and you will not be the ones who have to answer it, obviously. So if you want to discuss among yourselves, that's okay. Um, so now, oh, in the back, okay. Do you want to volunteer? Okay, come forward. Turn on. We believe that that is possible uh, from the moment that we use this wiki everything as a database for FrameNet. Eu entendi você até agora, não se preocupe. That's it. We believe that it's possible to we, to use Wiki the, in the, as it is possible to put it as a database for FrameNet. 
E sobre a segunda questão. What would be what problems might occur and what constraints? O que qual seria a dificuldade envolvida? Approach. And how would you fix it? How would you make the difficulties better? I promise that there are difficulties. I promise. I'll pass the buck here. Maybe we could uh, cr uh, take the contextual uh, thing and take this as an important thing that could happen. Take the context. I don't know what she says. I mean. Okay. Um, so uh, I don't think uh, the, the translators didn't quite get what you said, so I didn't get quite what you said. A sua questão? É a resposta. The answer related to what you pose here. So maybe we could take the context to a field. Uh, field. Uh, we could take into consideration the context here. That's what she said. Okay. Pode passar? So just complimenting here. Okay, good. Just complimenting here, I thought that this question, considering the database, something that is really that could uh, an approach, how could I put this, uh, something that could differ, that's something different. So, uh, so many people with crowdsource, uh, the database could be more dynamic, more complete, related to each frame. So this could probably help in related to the database of FrameNet. So, we understood what you're talking about, the database, the, about the wiki thing, but there are, there are some database, some people use this. We would like to know specifically, what are you focusing to ask uh, uh, for us to know the, the domain, for us to uh, try to imagine that? In the, it's a more general sense. The frame nets in its whole based on wiki and crowdsource, would that be possible for all approaches? We believe that. What, what would be the techno problems regarding that? Taking the, taking the, uh, the personnel point of view, some, everybody who could probably, uh, taking uh, to my point of view that, Working uh, with a more specific domain, more ge really general, you have really hard work. So I imagine that working in this scale, in this ratio, so in this general uh, proportion, I think that the one problem that is possible are methodological process, like checking the data. How could people uh, who don't understand about language or who don't study language could possibly approach the data in this way? In what sense this data would be relevant for the study of language? So it's a more methodological problem than uh, a matter of like taking this into consideration. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm going to leave this discussion here, just because we need to get exposure to the other questions. Um, but I think that this is the beginnings of the right answer, right? So there will be problems, because if you open it up to everyone, those people will not necessarily have all the background that we have. Um, and as a result, there will be errors. How do you check them? What process, do you train them? Do you just filter the data? What do you do? So the, I think the answer to your question is another question so far, which is how, you know, how do you experiment to find what the best answer is? Um, okay, thanks. All right, uh, do we have a volunteer for asking the next question? You want to ask next? Okay. 
Okay, so I think we have a um, tough question and we don't know exactly the answer, <laughs> but I think we should discuss about. Uh, first of all, I would like to place um, the, the, where did this question come from? Because I think it's important. Uh, my advisor is Neuza Salim, as many of you I assume no, and uh, uh, she she works in two different projects. I'm from the cognitive project, but I'm very curious about her other project, the education project. So this this question is about it, and she told a little bit about this project with Michael, mm -hmm. and we. Um, and I think it's one question that we can't solve, solve it yet. So I think it, uh, it's to be clear for every, everybody, I should speak in Portuguese. Go Maybe for it. That's don't fine. mind. That's better. É melhor. Okay. So the, the thing here is that, that I pose here is actually they're trying to investigate on the conception of rules in students in class. So they may develop a questionnaire with three questions. What is a rule in your opinion? In the second list, three rules that there are in your school and the third one talk about three rules that uh, could be part of your school. So, th th about the second question they made, talk about the rules that are in your school. Uh, so, we had the group had, I'm so curious about that, and I think that uh, I'm, I take part in this group. Uh, actually, I don't take part in this group. So the first project had answers like, don't run, don't use uh, short clothing, don't go up on trees, don't bite other students, don't fight, don't kick. So there are answers that are negative, that shows a prohibition aspect. So there are some answers regarding duty, like you wear a uniform, obey teachers and workers, drink water in break, on break time, amongst other goals. One of one of these uh, one of the op goals in this work was a description of a frame. So describe a frame, and this frame is a frame of prescription, and more specifically of uh, school prescription. In this frame, reading the description here, the frame describes the school conduct, the acting, school acting, a frame element, duty, and another one, prohibition, that could be, uh, that, that, that one part prohibited and the other one uh, takes that. One is the, the prohibition, then the frame element, duty. When one appears, the other one doesn't appear. And the FE, the responsible part. Uh, according to the construction here, it will be always indefinite. Will be a null instantiation here, indefinite null instantiation. However, now the question comes out. The, our doubt is uh, actually the, the group uh, has uh, has taken some time to elaborate this question. Just for us to understand, is hard. Is hard. So the the answer won't be something very easy at all. So we try to write something. Uh, because as, as we have to try to interact uh, or help uh, helping uh, ourselves, right? We were we take part in the situation here. So what happens is that the frame element, uh, prohibition or duty, they, they actually point to a specific scene, a frame. So the question here that, that we pose is how to deal with situations in which a frame element evokes another frame. And for our analysis, it's important for us to know what is being prohibited. 
fazer uma proibição. What, besides doing a prohibition, what is what refers to this prohibition? Which frame does it evoke? So the the duty. Uh, what are the duties? What's the frame in that? I don't know if this is very clear because it's a, it's a little bit complex. Just say that again, please, just first. Um, I think the question is really clear. So um, we can move on to the response. Do we have any volunteer? If you need some more information, there, are, there is the mapping, frame, the, the maps frames that that emerge from those frames. I'm going to. I'm going to say that uh, the group in the back, in the middle. I'm going to ask a question in Portuguese. Yeah, that's because better. I think. It's Sim, é melhor, eu acho. Uh -huh. We don't know the answer. Actually, we don't have a final response. I don't even know if it exists, but, anyways. Well, Levando em conta, então, considering que o, that o humor, né, as the comedy humor elas são estabelecidas it's a partir by de uma incongruência, uh, é uma relação de incongruência entre dois frames, two frames. como é que a FrameNet poderia lidar com, frame com essa relação? Então, como é que a FrameNet lidaria com o humor, se ele é uma incongruência entre dois frames? That would be our doubt, actually. Um, can, can you can actually you, read a little example? Uh, the joke? Yeah, just so that they have an idea. Okay, uh, I have a joke here. Eu it's in English. Aqui, está em inglês. I'm sorry. Me desculpem. Okay. Uh, então, a man walked into um a bar after a long day at work. De um longo dia de trabalho. As he began to drink his beer, he heard a voice say seductively, you've got a great hair. The man looked around, but couldn't see the voice, uh, sorry, but couldn't see where the voice was coming from. So he went back to his beer. A minute later, he heard the same soft voice say, you're a handsome man. The man looked around, but still couldn't see where the voice was coming from. When he, when he went back to his beer, the voice said again, What a stud you are. The man was so baffled by this, that he asked the bartender what was going on. The bartender said, Oh, it's the nuts. They are complimentary. Translate. And uh, so, because so, then we went to into the dictionary. Complimentary can have uh, can be uh, given free as courtesy, you know, to as a, a courtesy or something. So the nuts are complimentary because the nuts are given free. And in the frame net, uh, there is an LU for the verb to complement. So where uh, a communicator judges someone, uh, gives appraisal to someone. So, you know, it would be like the, the nuts are saying good things about uh, the guy. You see something like that. So let's say the word complimentary here is causing the humor, let's say, of this. So how could FrameNet actually deal with a... Uh, 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 Something like this. I don't know. I don't know the answer. So. Okay. So uh, first, I will ask for volunteers. Is there anybody who wants to handle this question? A group that just thinks, my gosh, humor. That's just what we want to talk about. Are you are you answering? Yeah, the previous question of okay. that group. Well, it's a complex question, and what we thought is that. She said that are um, uh, frame elements that evokes different frames. For example, as she said, uh, don't run. You have the frame of, of prescription, prescription, and the frame of run. She says that one of the difficulties that they have, that they find, is how to um, 
establish relations between these frames which are evoked by just one frame element. So we thought about um, do the full text annotation, you know, to discover what frames are evoked by the frame elements. And she says they had have already uh, done this. Uh, but we, we think that we should define two different uh, scenarios, you know, for example, the scenario of the prescription, you know, the frame elements, and the scenario of the running and its uh, frame elements, and create specific kinds of relation between the frame elements of both frames. I, I think it's a very hard question, <laughs> and uh, uh, I think uh, it um, it must be more th thought about, lots of lots and lots thought about yeah. that. But uh, um, in fact, we we realize that there is a relation between a uh, frame element in a frame, mm -hmm. and I, I think uh, fra FrameNet um, doesn't ha have um, a ca category for those kinds of relations. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Um, yeah, I will give a partial answer to that, just that we do have a way that we do that. If you want to make a frame-to-frame -frame relation, it's using we use a using relation, and then we uh, have a core and expressed element. But if you want to know more about that, I think I've already given that explanation to the people working on the project. So, uh, but if anybody else wants to talk about that, then you can come and talk to me after class for a little bit. Okay? Um, so, do we have uh, volunteers for a new question? Preguntas. Oh. Well, we thought about a definition that wasn't very clear for us, which was scripts. When we saw the notion of script, we, we, we saw that there was a relationship between the predecessor and the situation in the restaurant. And we thought, when Miran asked, we thought about a classroom script. And when we think about classroom, we think on scenes that are inside the classroom. And we would like to know if, when we describe a script, if we have to have a primary prototype. For example, when we see that the students describe scenes that are not traditional, are we still in the classroom scene? This is in our corpus. A student said, once a, teach, a new teacher came, uh, turned it to the students and told them to take their books and explain what they understood about the book. And then he asked each one to pick a book. And? We would like to know that when we think about a script, if we also think about a prototype, or if this example that I just read, it's out of the classroom script. Então, people, pessoas, eu, I think it's a very easy question, actually, less challenging. It's also a curiosity, a personal curiosity, something that I like, it's that I have for metonyms. We, we are asking ourselves, how do FrameNet would handle, how could we analyze what would be the interface in, with sentences dealing with metonyms, for example, I talked to the hotel yesterday, something like this. What kind of relation, how would you do to solve this problem or to explore the metonyms in situations like that? Okay? Uh, do we have a volunteer for this question? Is there a group that wants to take this question on? Okay, so uh, we think it's uh, in English or in Portuguese? Portuguese, Portuguese. Yeah. Okay. Uh, bom, Bem, de, de we would make an annotation on layers, first layer, second layer. Uh, bom, 
Well, what was the question then? Não, é, no. sim, é porque a gente pergunta right. que não, há, não faz. We asked him anotação, and he said that they don't do this kind of annotation. So assim, maybe if I had to analyze, not no, uh, annotate, but to analyze, which way would you take? Is it a relationship between frames or elements? Then I need time to discuss. <laughs> okay. Okay. I, I will point Eu out that, to say that what you were talking about would be a way to do it. Um, I have reasons why I wouldn't want to do it that way, um, but uh, it would be possible. That's not, it's not a terrible answer. It's a possible answer. Okay, uh, who has not yet presented a question? Okay, you want to present? Uh, can you pass? question <laughs> também. Our question is not that challenging, but it, it's about annotation. When we have an, an adjunct, a noun adjunct, making part of the same phrase with a target word, for example, a trainer, I have one sentence, the trainer, the coach, the German coach focused on the defense. I put German in a different layer, or do I put in the same phrase and point to an incorporation relation? Então, nós temos um voluntário para essa pergunta. Once German, it's part, it's a frame element. So, for the trainer, we have team as the core element and the players as another core element. Then, German would be part of a specific layer or would it be in the same phrase, the German coach? We thought about an answer, uh, sort of an answer, I don't know if it's going to be enough, but uh, this group asked about the notion of script and the prototypes. In our opinion, the prototype notion is in, in this script, because when you have a prototype, you need of a, a web of categories. You got to have closer elements and farther elements. And you, in your example, it's a peripheral example, but even though it still keeps some characteristics of classroom script, script, there are some similarities and some differences. But I suppose it is in the periphery of the frame. This doubt came because in terms of prototype, we didn't know if it would be applicable to the script. Can, can we? Yeah, see. So the script and the frame, are they the same or almost the same thing? This is our doubt, actually. Um, I think I will answer directly, if you don't mind. Um, it is true that prototypes are more difficult to apply to events. All of the examples from the early literature, they're always entities chairs or birds or something like that. But um, even though there is evidence that at a deep level, we do think about events in a different way than we think about entities, right? It's actually different chunks of the brain that are doing these things. Still, um, there is uh, the example that was brought forward by Chuck Fillmore of climbing, which is either upward motion or using the arms to grasp on things, or in the prototype case, both. So we do have some evidence that, uh, that events can be thought of in terms of prototypes, and that scripts, even bigger events, could also be thought of in terms of prototypes. Uh, it's just, you should use the same methodology that were used for, for prototypes in the other cases. 
And I can tell you that if you do that, that actually the results are not as clean as what Roche got with uh, entities. Um, and in fact, people tend not to think as categorically about events uh, as they do about entities. So it is a real problem. Uh, but uh, I think the, the initial answer is we have some evidence that says you can do it, just that it won't work as well. OK? Thiago has a. Uh, just another contribution in the sense uh, I'm a little bit familiar with your uh, instruments, the interviews you use for students. And I think that no student would have a problem describing this particular class as being different from other classes. But also, no, none of these students would be confused about whether they were a class. Yes, that's the point. So both. The point that I, I want to make is that different as a lexical unit can be seen as a linguistic entity that operates this kind of reasoning that you have just did. So when you say that it was a different class, it means that although it was the same event of a class, it was not the prototype of the class. So you would be somehow denying some of the features you mm -hmm. would find naturally in the class. So only the teacher speaks, the students only listen, they are not entitled to choose what they're going to read, they have to read what the teacher tells them to, okay? And I think it might not be that relevant for FrameNet for general vocabulary, but I think it would be relevant to investigate what kind of words, of lexemes, can be paired with this function in your data. Okay, because since uh, in the end, it's planned to be a domain-specific FrameNet for education, and uh, all the practices involved, maybe you have enough cognitive prominence to propose new frames that operate those kinds of distinctions. So for example, I'm, I was thinking while we were, you were saying that maybe some adjective as different or nice in the sense aula legal could operate exactly this kind of notion. It's cool, it's nice because it's not prototypical. It's different because it's not prototypical. Yeah. Okay? Cool. So uh, we're getting to towards the end of our time here. Um, what do people over here, do you guys want to respond soon? Are you still deep in discussion, or can you have a response? We, have, uh, we had a lot of time, but we still don't have an answer. OK. Um, well, what do you, do you have, even if you don't have an answer, do you have a question to ask the person to get Yes. I'll, as I am a very, very, well, I'm not really into frame semantics. This yeah. is the first time I see frame semantics was this course. Yeah. I would like to ask if, we, I, if I can just put a label like frame is matching in this case. Just like, like uh, which, uh, frame mismatching. Like frame mismatch, okay. Like this, yeah, it's like everything that's humor, humoristic mm -hmm. or ironic, I would label like frame mismatching. But it will be a very easy yet not very good way to do that. Okay. So, so in other words, just, just the idea is just have the, the idea of mismatch and then label things yeah. for a mismatch. I don't think it's really good. I, it would mess up a lot of studies so <laughs> far. I, I okay. don't think it's a good anyway, but. Um, and it's a question, if I can or not okay. use it. Just, just complimenting, uh, uh, I mean, we agree with our fellows that uh, humor relies on double understandings. Yeah. And maybe at least these double understandings are related to uh, different use lexical units for the same target. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, we, as, as he said, uh, we have to 
make a different annotation, different framework. Okay, I think you're on the pathway to an interesting response. Uh, first, I'm going to ask if the group behind you that asked the question wants to push you a little bit, or whether I should do that. Are you nominating me, or do you, do you have an idea? No, uh, I actually don't. Okay, then yes. I have a very specific suggestion that will narrow down your ideas. So, in the case uh, where it relies on a double understanding, to me, you're already implying that you want to annotate for both frames, right? So, complementary, the very last word in, uh, in the, the joke uh, that was read, it in a certain sense, evokes two frames, right? So the first idea that you are giving me, you didn't say it exactly, but I'm interpreting, is to annotate twice. Now your, your other idea will be more useful. So if you just say mismatch, it's very unclear what that might mean. But if you annotate for both frames, you can annotate which frame elements are weird, right? So for both of the frames, there will be a partial match. Some pieces of information will match one frame, and some pieces of information will match the other one, okay? So I think you guys actually have a pretty good answer, and if you'd been given some more time and a little bit more poking at the right moments, then I think you would get to something very nice. Okay. So, uh, I think there's still one more question out there. Is this correct? Someone needs to answer the question from the back. Do we have a volunteer? Them, you guys are still answering that one. Okay. This question was about, I don't know exactly the sentence, the German coach helped the team and we would take uh, German apart once he said they were different, different things. It depends on the target. If the target is the sentence as I created the verb to help, so the frame is help, we would not put it apart. The German coach would be one only thing, but if our target was coach, then we would put it aside, because you, you have to know what kind of coach it is, if it's German, if it's young, if it's old, because then the, the ID would be the name, and it would be important to this target. For this specific scene of this a specific coach, and then it would be like a uh, uh, repetitive frame element that describes so if we uh, uh, if we were noting the the coach as the target, the help help it wouldn't matter. In, to differentiate the annotation, it's the same as I did with tourism. Tourists from all over the, con the world visit Brazil. If my target is visit, we don't have to distinguish the tourists from everybody else. But if my target is the tourist, then I have to designate, designate a frame element for that specific frame. So if you could talk to us a little bit about that. Okay. Okay. So I had a slightly different you. idea about the question that was asked from the back um, because German, when modifying coach, potentially has two functions, right? So German can both be describing which team he is the coach of and also what his nationality, if any, is, right? Uh, and I didn't at least detect you talking about that problem in your response. Did, did you already address that? I mean, I may have missed it. Translation is tough. Um, but uh, did you want to try to answer that part? 
Eu não sei se eu fui muito. I don't know if I was clear enough, but I believe that we should separate the nationality, the origin of this coach, which is Germany. If we were noting the word coach as my target, if we note the verb, it's not important. In this specific annotation, it wouldn't be relevant to note the origin of this coach, the nationality. So we would uh, analyze the UL help. This is something that I would like you to talk about. I think in Portuguese is better. Eu acho que em português é bem melhor. Eu acho que existem duas questões. There are two questions. The ambiguity. It's something that I want to reinforce as I was talking before. The ambiguity will be relevant if the UL evoke the frame coach. Because if the UL uh, this, this ambiguity loses its sense because it was won and we say the, the German coach won one more turn, then he's just a participant, right? All the, the, the phrase will be the participant. So in my point of view, this is part of the problem. I would consider this phrase uh, part of a total phrase frame, and it, ha it must have not just because the kind of frame el element, but because of the sy it's synthetic relations that are in there. This is all external, so it doesn't make sense to put it apart. So now let's think that I am annotating for coach. Okay? If I'm annotating for coach, I always consider German as a different element to be annotated, which is an adjective, specifically in this case. And then it uh, is related of having one frame element to each one of the sizes, the nationality, the team, whatever, any other description, and it is related to the syntax of the name to put the adjective that is um, embodied, embodied by the name. So if I note for national team or nationality, it's another thing. For example, if I'm not wrong, Luiz Felipe Scolari was the coach of Portugal team, and he's a Brazilian guy. So we can have a sentence like the Brazilian coach of the Portuguese team. So Brazilian is the description of the coach, and the Portugal t uh, team is his team, the team that he coaches. Or I could say the Portuguese coach written by a journalist that doesn't know that he was Brazilian. So I would note to the national team, because the person didn't know that he was not Portuguese. Uh, in Portuguese, in Portuguese, so just one doubt, because in this concept of uh, football, soccer, I don't think that German or Portuguese would be used as a reference to the coach, but a kind of metonym uh, related to the team. And if we consider that this could be used for some kind of inference, if the German coach won, we could say that the team, the German team won. So in this context, this German could be, should be noted. No, it's not an uh, incorporation, embodiment. You would have this possibility of put the frame element on the in the UL or make an annotation if the morphology of the word had the information about the national team. But then I'm out of the word, I'm out of my limit. I have the noun phrase and I can add an adjective. So, for example, Giving Maucho's uh, example, the UL tourist, the LU tourist, instantiates the frame element tourist.
Então, eu não tenho so, como I, there's no way forma, to né, say in a different way and separate de, this de, kind of information. Uh, but in the case of German coach, no. Só complementando, Just uh, to complement, we have the same conclusion uh, uh, based in another example, uh, for example, Japanese, Japanese car made in Brazil, um, American, American China, computer China, made in China. China. It evokes the question of the company that makes, that produces it, or the model, or the kind. It's, there are so many possibilities, but basically this is in the frame discussion and the annotation that gives you a context where it is inserted. But uh, then we are going to reach Bruno's question about metonyms. Wouldn't be the case of considering that those targets, Brazilian, Chinese, Japanese, could be connected to more than one group. Well, one group is nationality, another group is the company, and so on. Could be different targets for different frames. Okay, maybe, if it was relevant somehow. Um, I have enjoyed this discussion a lot. It's been amazing being here. And I love every one of you. Uh, so thank you so much. And I hope to see you all again very soon. OK. Então, é, eu queria fazer uma série de pequenos agradecimentos. É, you want to listen to that, I think. É, em primeiro lugar, eu queria agradecer a presença de todos vocês, é, todos vocês que estão aqui, todos vocês que irão assistir o vídeo depois em casa. É, não haveria propósito em fazer essa escola de autoestudo se a gente não tivesse a participação de vocês. E além da participação, uma coisa que me deixou muito feliz, mas não só a mim, mas também os outros, as outras pessoas que trabalham comigo na Freminet, os meus alunos, que é o interesse de pessoas que efetivamente não estão vinculadas ao projeto. Né? Isso para a gente foi excelente. É, é muito bom saber que aquilo que você está fazendo não interessa só a você mesmo. Né? Então é um momento de profunda felicidade. É, em segundo lugar, eu queria agradecer à universidade e a todas as instâncias dela, né? para quem trabalhou comigo diretamente na organização desse evento, sabe como é importante o apoio da direção da faculdade, da coordenação do programa, da pró-reitoria de pós-graduação e da pró-reitoria de planejamento, que foram fundamentais para que tudo isso acontecesse no horário, né, na hora certinha, do jeito certinho. É, tenho que agradecer também a CAPES, que é a principal financiadora desse evento. Também, sem esse apoio, a gente não conseguiria fazer nada disso. Agradecer a equipe dos alunos que trabalha comigo e trabalhou arduamente ainda mais durante esse evento, os alunos de graduação, os de mestrado, de doutorado, todo mundo que faz a Freminet funcionar e que fez a escola de altos estudos funcionar, chegando cedo, abrindo a sala, fazendo lista de frequência, né, todas, e depois, quando vocês não estiverem mais aqui, fazendo certificado, mandando certificado, né, respondendo e-mails, fazendo zilhões de coisas. E queria agradecer aos professores que vieram, ao Michael e à Miriam, né, e, em especial, também as pessoas que estão lá na Freminet de Berkeley, tornando isso tudo possível, né, que deixaram esses dois deixarem o trabalho de lado, virem para cá. Né, é, agradecer ao Colin, agradecer ao Filmor e a todo mundo que tornou isso tudo possível. Por fim, é, só duas pequenas questões. Primeiro, uma coisa de que a gente precisa muito, muito, muito na Freminet é gente. Então, é, vocês, por favor, não se sintam abandonados, deixados de lado. Né? Ah, nunca mais vou poder mexer com isso na minha vida, não. Se vocês quiserem fazer anotações, aprender mais sobre isso, saber como que a gente faz, usar o nosso software, que está quase ficando pronto, vai ser um prazer. Né? É, e a segunda coisa é que, além de a gente fazer a avaliação dos artigos daquelas pessoas que estão inscritas nessa disciplina como alunos de pós-graduação, a gente também vai publicar os melhores trabalhos que forem entregues. Na revista Gatilho, é uma revista do programa de pós-graduação, 
que é uma revista dos alunos, e eles cederam para a gente um número especial para publicar os trabalhos produzidos por vocês. Certo? Então, é, como estímulo extra para fazer o trabalho que vocês precisam entregar para a gente até o dia 15 de agosto, né? quem é aluno de pós, é, vocês têm a chance de conseguir uma publicação desse artigo né, na revista do programa de pós dos alunos. Ok? Então, agradeço a todos vocês mais uma vez, e a gente se vê em breve, creio eu, numa próxima escola. Okay.